Horseshoe Bend and the scores of massacres that preceded it silenced the strong anti-slavery faction within the Creek Nation. Jackson's extermination policies against the Upper Creeks created Alabama and resulted in the Indian Removal Act and ultimately the Trail of Tears. Even so, thousands of Creeks fought on the side of the Union in the American Civil War. Once again, we were targeted. Our homes burned and hundreds died. Mr. Chairman, Vice Chair, members of this esteemed committee, thank you for the opportunity to testify. My name is John Dev Osula Chowdhury, and I'm proud to serve as ambassador of the Muscogee Creek Nation. As I sit here before you today, the sovereignty of all tribal nations is under attack. Two years ago, the Supreme Court upheld our nation's sovereignty in McGirt versus Oklahoma. Just this past month, however, the court chose to abdicate it in order to placate Oklahoma politicians. Congress has a duty to protect the sovereignty of all tribal nations. That duty is all the more pressing when one branch of the federal government seeks to eliminate it. The Freedmen issues trace their roots to injustices against both Native Americans and African Americans. It goes without saying that slavery is and always has been wrong. And just as the United States fought a civil war over slavery, the Creek Nation fought its own civil war. On one side were the traditionalist Upper Creeks who opposed the imposition of colonial American life into our nation, including the legalization of slavery. I'm a descendant of Fish Pond and other Upper Creek towns. My mom used to explain family oral history stating that when our family and other Creeks would raid slave owners, we would give freed slaves three options. One, receive our assistance for passage to the North. Two, live among us and with us. Or three, join an autonomous black community within the larger Muscogee world. However, these practices conflicted directly with the goals and desires of the most prominent Lower Creeks, who sought to fully assimilate every aspect of white American culture into the fabric of our nation, including slavery, cotton, and Christianity. Instead of allowing the conflict at Creek Nation to play out through our own internal democratic processes, the United States intervened and dispatched General Andrew Jackson to exterminate the Upper Creeks. The United States' goal was nothing less than complete annihilation. In eight months of massacres, the United States burned nearly every Upper Creek home and murdered thousands of men, women, and children. My ancestors from Fish Pond sought refuge at Horseshoe Bend on the Tallapalooza River in Alabama, and they were slaughtered by Jackson and the slave-owning Cherokee leaders, John Ross and Major Ridge, who volunteered to fight with them. At Toa Hoshji, Jackson locked 50 men, women, and children in a cabin and burned them alive. Horseshoe Bend and the scores of massacres that preceded it silenced the strong anti-slavery faction within the Creek Nation. Jackson's extermination policies against the Upper Creeks created Alabama and resulted in the Indian Removal Act and ultimately the Trail of Tears. Even so, thousands of Creeks fought on the side of the Union in the American Civil War. Once again, we were targeted. Our homes burned and hundreds died. In exchange for our loyalty, the United States promised that once the war ended, our nation would not lose any land and all of the loyal Creeks would be financially assisted. Both promises turned out to be lies. The Treaty of 1866 has often been characterized as a reconstruction treaty. For us, it was not. It was a land grab that stripped us of half out of our reservation by force. And my great-great-grandpa up Knee Hill, who fought for the Union, said the final payment from the United States wasn't enough to buy a hat. It is important to note that we are not Cherokee Nation, we are not Chickasaw Nation, we are the Muscogee Creek Nation. Our treaty with the United States contains different language than the treaties of other tribal nations. Our current constitution was reviewed and approved by the Department of the Interior. However, the interpretation of this treaty is currently the subject of ongoing litigation. Any true solution must go beyond the shallow 
political rhetoric and the yes-no binaries that such rhetoric supports. To that end, we've begun a process at Muskogee Creek Nation of developing historical, cultural, and legal research that will help our citizens engage in a thoughtful, informed exploration of this issue as they exercise their sovereign right to determine the future of the Muskogee Creek Nation. The Muskogee Creek Nation is proud of our diverse citizenship. We have citizens who have mixed ancestry, who are also white, African-American, Mexican-American, and many other heritages. I, myself, am Creek and Asian. But whatever else we may be, we are all Creek Indians by blood. And as a nation that has endured policies intended to exterminate us because we are Creek Indians by blood, citizenship and issues involving non-Creek persons engender deep conflicting emotions. Quite frankly, our citizens stand on both sides of these issues. We're working towards healing. We're not only the descendants of select families that own slaves, but also those who oppose slavery and incurred the targeted and murderous wrath of the United States military. But the solution to this is not another colonial intervention by the United States. Maduro.